Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Nonstop Talking with your girl here, Vivian Lou. Today I am going to be discussing the worst TV shows and movies I watched in 2023, so they didn't necessarily have to come out in 2023. I would say like, I watched a lot of really good stuff in 2023. I had a really like solid watching year um, because I had so many titles to talk about in the best that like I'm also creating like a most surprising list as well. And with like my like most disappointing slash worst, um, mainly they're like, mostly like I would say most disappointing. Um, but yeah, there's only eight titles and it's gonna be countdown style, so let's get started. Starting off this countdown at number eight is unfortunately the Korean drama King the Land uh, that stars Yuna of Girls' Generation and Lee Jun Ho of 2PM. I am a second generation K-pop fangirl, so this really, really hurts me. Um, and it wasn't like King the Land was bad per se. It was just very disappointing because I was obviously highly anticipating it because of the cast. And it just didn't deliver in terms of like story and plot. Um, it's your very typical rich CEO falls for his employee who is of a lower social economic class. Um, and I just think like this drama really had nothing going for it besides the fact that Yuna and Junho has really really good chemistry. Besides their chemistry there's like nothing else that's going on like the side characters and their stories I was not invested in. Um, the friend that's like married like why didn't she get a divorce at the end like I just I could not with King the Land like I was just so disappointed and I was also really bored because there was no story to be told. It just, like just relied on the chemistry of the two leads and that's not good enough. Number seven is The Long Ballad. It is a Chinese drama and I'm just so sad I didn't love this because it has two of my favorite Chinese actresses, Song Lu Xi and Di Li Ba. It hurts me that I didn't love this uh, so the long song is not the long song, the long ballad. Duh. I knew I was saying it wrong. Uh, but the long ballad, um, it like centers around like actual real historic figures from the Tang Dynasty, but it's set in this like fictional world. And in it, Tang is like her parents are murdered and she decided to like avenge her parents and the people or the person behind the death of her parents is the current emperor who is also her uncle. Um, and I think in terms of the long ballet, it has like an explosive start. So like right off the bat, it, like it just captivates you. But as it progresses, it kind of like dulls like it loses its shine a little um i think um it drags its feet and there is no like stand out villain like the motives for like why people are evil in this are kind of like weak and unclear um and so because of that i feel like in like costume stories where there's a lot of like betrayal and war and revenge like you need like a villain to carry the story and there just wasn't a big enough villain to like carry the long ballad. Number six is Advance Bravely which is a Chinese BL series. Um, it's by the same author as Addicted which I have an unhealthy love for um, and that's why I watched Advance Bravely. Advance Bravely being on this list is honestly by no fault of its own. The only versions that are available on streaming sites is this censored cut version that is cut to the point where it's unwatchable. Like the scenes are just like really choppy and like nothing flows. It doesn't make sense. Suddenly you're in one moment and then and like you're in another moment the next. Um, so yeah, like Advance Bravely, like being bad is not its fault. It's like in a way regulations happen. They had to switch it up and the switch up in the final product was just 
like unbearable to watch and it's just like really sad because of that um so i wouldn't recommend it unless you are like a big simon gong jun fan and like you want to see him in one of like i think this is probably one of like his first like main leading roles number five is a rewatch um and it's go figure a 2005 decom um so in 2023 i went through this kind of thing where like i was like rewatching uh decoms of the past and like comparing them to like movies that had a uh, similar like premise or interest go figure obviously it's about figure skating but there's also ice hockey uh but if you do want like in my opinion, better movies about figure skating, watch either Ice Princess or The First Cutting Edge. Um, but yeah, so go figure, the main girl, Caitlin, uh, wants to train with this one coach uh, who teaches at a, pre uh, at a boarding school that her parents cannot afford. Um, there is no figure skating scholarship, but there is one for um, the ice hockey team, which um, through some background nonsense uh she gets and now she has to like uh practice with the hockey team while hiding the fact that like she's actually like wants to like be a competitive figure skater um i don't know i think i just like described it really poorly i hope you got the gist even if you didn't don't watch it because the problem with this was that it just didn't really age well because there's so much girl hate in the beginning there's like the beginning just like pummels you with girl hate and you're just like really like everyone in female sports hates female athletes like i don't i don't know like <laughs> I just the amount of girl hate that she gets from like her teammates, her competitors, like it's it's wild. I'm like really there's no support, there's no love. Um, I don't know, it just made me like really like it felt really icky. Um, so yeah, it was a disappointing rewatch. Number four is Copycat Killer. Alright, we're actually like headed into territory of like I genuinely think like these suck. <laughs> Um, so in partnership, my friend and her boyfriend highly recommended Copycat Killer to me at like the start of the year. And I'm like, okay, two people in my real life is like recommending this to me. It's on Netflix. I could easily watch it. Let's watch it. Um, and I have never been more disappointed with two people I know in real life's like recommendation, like why why did i trust you guys why did you guys lie to me so hard um copycat killer um starts off good it's a taiwanese series um and um obviously it follows like this cat and mouse concept of like catching a kill serial killer um however there's like a clear moment where like the show like should have ended and it didn't and it just continues and it becomes like really convoluted and like really stupid and it loses its focus of like like what it wanted to like do in the first place i felt like it just lied to us i told us like hey we're setting up for this premise and you're like yeah i want to watch that and then later on they're like mm, yeah we're moving away from that right now and it's just like well why 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 did you sucker me in and then like trade off to give me something that i did not want and i was not expecting and it was not good i have um a fr another friend who watched this and was like oh you're watching this it sucks and i was like i know but i, I need to know the ending now i'm like committed and um we were both just like shitting on how bad it was and then also shitting on the fact that like this was recommended to me by like this couple and like how poorly like their recommendation was and like how I would not trust their recommendation <laughs> in the future. I mean, in the end of the day, like Copycat Killer had the makings and potential to be like a great psychological thriller and then it just lost its path. Number three is LA Rams cheerleaders making the squad. So this like randomly just showed up on Hulu and I was like, oh my God. This looks so good because back in the day, I really, really used to love um, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders making the team. Like that reality show was like my crack. Um, and 
honestly, if the LA Rams version didn't wasn't like a short three episodes yeah it's like short three episodes that's how little content they had and they still wanted to like create a reality show from it um i like got like in i finished the first episode i'm like eh, and then i got halfway into the second episode i'm like oh, i should drop it and then i checked and i was like wait it's only three episodes long whatever let's just finish it and it's just such a terrible 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 knockoff and it just wasn't done well. It had nothing to say, nothing to prove. And I'm just like, why? Why was this created? It didn't create any hype for me. Like, ugh, what a disappointment. Number two is an entire like movie trilogy and it's 365 days. I had no intentions of watching this erotica, uh, but on YouTube, I watch a lot of like reviews um, and like hate reviews or negative reviews and so um 365 days was just like constantly showing up on my feed so i watched a bunch of people's videos on it and it got to a point where i was like you know what i think this it's time for me to like create or to formulate my own opinions of it so i watched the first film which is 365 days and i think it had the makings to be like a fun guilty pleasure watch it wasn't like that bad um, I gave it like 2.5 out of 5 stars, which I think is like, hmm, you know? Um, and I was like, I can continue with this mess. And then I watched the second film and I was like, wow, where's the fun in this? It just like got bad. And then uh, I watched the third film, um, very like not eager. And like my expectations were like really low already with how bad the second film was. And uh, the third film really like just dropped the baton. It just tanked. It just was not good whatsoever. And I was just kind of mad. I was kind of mad because I was like, you had the potential to just do what you needed to do and just be fun. Just be sexy and fun. That's all we needed from you. You didn't need plot you didn't need all this like stupid like twists and turns and confrontation like you could have added those for kicks but then you tried to take yourself too seriously maybe and you wanted to be serious and it just i don't know i don't know what went wrong i think maybe they should have like ended it when it was like still fun so the second film is 365 days this day i gave 1.5 and then the last one is the next 365 days which i gave 0 0.5 if they decide to like continue with this trilogy and make it into like a movie series of sorts um i will not be watching anymore i i am good i'm good thank you very much before i get to my number one worst movie that i watched in 2023 um i like quickly checked and i actually have three uh, shows that I dropped so I just wanted to quickly go over them uh, the first one is Star versus the Force of Evil so with Star versus the Force of Evil I didn't actually drop it in 2023 I think I might have dropped it last year but I didn't mention it so now I'm putting it here it's very cute um, if I could I would cosplay as the main uh, female character however it just wasn't for me it just didn't work for me okay but it's cute i can see why people like it uh the next one is peaky blinders so peaky blinders is something like my boyfriend really liked um and so i decided to like give it a try i couldn't like i finished the pilot and then c didn't really want to continue anymore um it just i i can see its appeal uh but it just wasn't holding my attention um and then the last one is from the trailer was so intriguing um I started it with a friend and we both agreed like yeah we can't take any more of this we we just need to drop it and yeah we, I think we like maybe got three four episodes in when we're like yeah 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 we've seen enough we're good at number one and this is like, just so disappointing um is through the through the stop through my window across the sea um this is the sequel to through my window um which is a spanish teen flick and uh, that like was kind of a guilty pleasure of mine the year that it came out and i was like looking forward to the sequel i like even read the book books and um it just this just was not good um i felt like this movie had nothing going for it so it just kept 
wanting to ruin the main couple and what really carried the first film in a way was just how much chemistry and passion the main couple had and like seeing them like not communicate harboring um like mistrust and like not able i don't know like it's just i get that like a long distance relationship is tough but like at a certain point like breaking up making up breaking up making up it just becomes very dry and boring to watch uh, so yeah so they ruin the main couple and then the, sh the movie has the audacity to be like we actually really don't have a compelling plot here we have not much going for us let's kill a side character and like then this will be like emotional um and so yeah they go and like kill a side character and you're blindsided by it because it was uh very unnecessary and the way that they die is just also like super unnecessary and you're just like this whole entire sequel just should not exist i will watch the next film um, I think it's going to be following the older brother, hopefully, um, and it's not another uh, stupid spinoff of um, our main characters breaking up, making up, breaking up, making up, and then, I don't know, they find someone else to kill. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, a, a cross stop through my window across the sea. I would also like to add that I hope uh, the next installment will bring back the sexy times and the fun times because I also took a really really long time to watch and finish this movie and it's not even that long like I just I just could not get into it but I was like if I'm gonna continue with this which I will I need to actually finish this <laughs> my brain that's just how it works okay that's it those are the worst tv shows and movies mainly like first half was like most disappointing and then the latter half was like Ugh. um but yeah so that's why did I do that the worst slash most disappointing tvs and movies I watched in 2023 and um next I think I'm gonna be doing the books and then if I feel like it I will then go into like most surprising watches and I think that will wrap up my year-end series. I did unhaul, as you can tell, new year, new background. I did move um, and I like unhauled a bunch of books before moving. Um, and I like never post that e video, even though I'm like pretty situated in this new apartment. Uh, so I don't know, maybe I'll like throw it back, post that book unhaul video as well so that is the tentative game plan outro time like comment subscribe see you in my next video whenever that is bye